Good evening. Welcome to our third midweek Advent service. It's wonderful that you could join us tonight as we continue to unwrap the gifts of God. Uh, we have talked about the gift of his word, talked about the gift of his baptism, and tonight we're going to discuss the gift of Holy Communion. And so thank you very much for being here tonight, and uh, we learn together and speak together uh, our Christian faith. And so as we do that, I invite you to please rise. The Spirit and the church cry out, Come, Lord Jesus. All those who await his appearance pray, Come, Lord Jesus. The whole creation pleads, Come, Lord Jesus. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who led your people Israel by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May his word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. For you are merciful and you love your whole creation. And we, your creatures, glorify you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated for our hymn. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. For those who fear him have no lack. The young lions suffer want and hunger. But those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, O oh children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is there who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Turn away from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous and his ears toward their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut off the memory of them from the earth. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Let the incense of our repentant prayer 
ascend before you, O Lord, and let your loving kindness descend on us, that with purified minds we may sing your praises with the church on earth and the whole heavenly host, and may glorify you forever. Amen. Testament reading for tonight is from the book of Exodus, the 12th chapter. Uh, this portion of Exodus is right before the initial Passover, where the angel of death will pass over the houses of the Israelites. Uh, the blood of the lamb that is slaughtered will protect them from death. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the tenth day of this month every man shall take a lamb according to their father's houses, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for a lamb, then he and his nearest neighbor shall take according to the number of persons, according to what each can eat, you shall make your count for your lamb. The lamb shall be without blemish, a male a year old. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. And you shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month, when the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill their lambs at twilight. Then they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the flesh that night, roasted on the fire, with unleavened bread and bitter herbs they shall eat it. Do not, let any, do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it its head with its legs and its inner parts. And you shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. In this manner you shall eat it, with your belt fastened, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike all the firstborn of the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and on all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be assigned for you on the houses where you are, and when I see the blood I will pass over you, and no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading for tonight is from the 10th chapter of St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. 
Uh, St. Paul is talking to a people who are used to seeing sacrifices made to other altars, to other gods. And uh, he is trying to confer to these Christians that when we, when we uh, worship our God, we are worshiping together. And if you worship a different God, you worship with them. And so we, we make it our focus that we do not muddy the waters between our God and their God. Therefore, my beloved... Flee from adultery. I speak as to sensible people. Judge for yourselves what I say. The cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Consider the people of Israel. Are not those who eat the sacrifices participants in the altar? What do I imply then? That food offered to idols is anything or that the, an idol is anything? No. I imply that what, demon, what pagan sacrifice they offer to demons and not to God. I do not want you to be participants with demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the table of the Lord and the table of demons. Shall we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise as we hear from the gospel. From the 22nd chapter of the gospel of St. Luke, we hear of Jesus eating the Passover feast, of which we heard of in Exodus chapter 12, and Jesus institutes the Lord's Supper. And when the hour came, he reclined at table and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he said, Take this. And divide it among, among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to them saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise the cup after they had eaten saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. But now in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. You may be seated. We speak tonight the words from our, uh, from our catechism about the sacrament of the altar. What is the sacrament of the altar? It is the true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ under the bread and wine instituted by Christ himself for us Christians to eat and to drink. What is the benefit of this eating and drinking? These words given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins show us that in the sacrament Forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation are given us through these words. For where there is forgiveness of sins, there is also life and salvation. How can bodily eating and drinking do such great things? Certainly not just eating and drinking do these things, but the words written here, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. These words, along with the bodily eating and drinking, are the main thing in the sacrament. Whoever believes these words has exactly what they say, forgiveness of sins. Who receives this sacrament worthily? Fasting and bodily preparation are certainly fine outward training. But that person is truly worthy and well prepared who has faith in these words given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. But anyone who does not believe these words or doubts them is unworthy and unprepared 
for the words for you require all hearts to believe. We now sing our sermon hymn. Grace, mercy, and peace be to each and every one of you through our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. No matter who you are, no matter what place you come from, what your language might be, whether you're old or you're young or something in between, whether you're rich or you're poor, there are basic human needs that kind of equalize all of us. It doesn't matter how famous you are, how wealthy you are, but you've got to sleep. There's no way around it. You need shelter. You need clothing. You need food and drink. We have lots of differences in our lives. Lots of different situations that we find ourselves in. Lots of things that separate us from other people. But there are basic human necessities that every person has to take part in. One of those, of course, as I said, is the, the eating and drinking that takes on such a communal aspect in our lives. We can picture in our heads the family that sits around the table talking about their day as they have supper. Or maybe catching up with an old friend over coffee or having lunch. There's something about the eating and the drinking that brings us together, that, that, that shares a common bond, and it doesn't matter what our differences might be, it puts us all on the same level. As we've gone through the gifts of God, one of the things that I think we need to realize is that God can use such ordinary stuff to do extraordinary things. I mean, our first Wednesday, we talked about words on a page, right? We talked about that the, the writers of Scripture had taken God's Word and put it down for us to read, to know, to take to heart. Words are everywhere. Books are everywhere. What an ordinary thing to bring light and life into us. And last week, we talked about baptism. What an ordinary thing of water, something we see all the time. 
Something we need to have in our lives to clean ourselves and to nourish ourselves and to just sprinkle some regular water on a person and to use the word of God in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit does an extraordinary thing by making them a part of his family, marking them as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. And tonight we talk about another ordinary thing that we do all the time, the eating and drinking. The thing that, that everybody has to do, Jesus uses this ordinary thing to bring about an extraordinary reality. Because we, when we talk about communion, that's what we are simply doing, isn't it? Whether we're communing up here in a continuous fashion, or when we get back up to the altar, we kneel. We, we are simply doing what we're used to doing. We take food, and we chew it, and we swallow it, and we take drink, the wine, and we drink it. It's ordinary. But it is far from an ordinary thing that God does through this eating and drinking. We read tonight the account from St. Luke as Jesus was presiding over the Passover with his friends. And he took the bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise the cup after they had eaten saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. Jesus makes a promise here. That this ordinary thing that you have been doing this entire time, this eating and drinking, that when you do it in remembrance of me, when you do it in this moment, when you do it when it is my body and my blood, it is far more powerful, far more special, far more sacramental and salvific than anything possible. And he says there, he gives a new covenant. He gives a new promise. A new contract. And he says, when you eat my body and you drink my blood, that is me bringing forgiveness into your life. That is me allowing you to feast on the Son of God himself. That he is present, that he is truly there at communion. That it is not just a wafer and a small bit of wine, but it is also the very body and blood of him who died for us. That makes it different than any other meal we could possibly do. It makes it into this thing that is extraordinary by doing something that seems so ordinary to us. Eating and drinking. These other meals that we take part in, they, where we have conversations with friends and family, sure, that nourishes us, but it nourishes our body. But when we come forward and receive the body and blood of Christ, we are nourished in spirit and in soul. We are given forgiveness of sins. And in this moment, when, when we come forward and receive the body and blood of Christ, we are face to face with God himself. That makes what we do here so much more important. And when we receive that body and blood of Christ, we receive that new covenant, we receive that new promise that in him and only in him can we find true forgiveness, true life, true eternity. When we face God himself, that is normally something that we would be terrified of. But when Jesus comes to us as one of us and offers us himself to eat and to drink, we are not terrified of him, but we rejoice in him. Because he has not come to punish us. He has not come to, uh, to condemn us. But in this meal, he comes to free us from our sin, to free us from death itself. This is why we make such, such a big deal out of communion and out of taking communion and learning about communion because we are face to face with God himself and we are face to face with the reality that he has sacrificed himself for me and now feeds me on himself. We receive the sacrament, not in fear, but in hope. 
and hope that we have that forgiveness and hope that we have that eternal life and hope that Christ has died for me, offers himself for me, and because of him, I will rise with him. So in this meal, we do this ordinary thing, but we receive an extraordinary gift from him, the forgiveness of sins and the eternal life that has been promised in the new covenant that has been forged in the blood of Christ, which we receive in with and under the bread and wine, the body and blood given and shed for us for life everlasting. Amen. And now may the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. I invite you, if you haven't already, uh, on your way out this, this evening, we have offering plates in the back and in the narthex to place your offering there, or you can find online giving through our website. We rise for prayer. Oh God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works. Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, how will it be thy name? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and preserve you. Amen. You may be seated for our closing hymn. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome once again to the Lord's house. It's fantastic that you could be here with us tonight. Uh, this is our last midweek service, uh, but next week, of course, is the week of Christmas. And so on Christmas Eve, which is December 24th, which is Thursday, I should say, that's probably more helpful. Uh, we will be having uh, a 1.30 candlelight service, uh, 1.30 p.m., not a.m., um, 1.30, and then we'll have the exact same service at 5.30 the idea being that we could split the crowd a little bit. Um, so please uh, consider to attend one of those, uh, 1.30 or 5.30 Christmas Eve. And then on Christmas Day, we will have a 9 a.m. service with communion. Uh, so that is our, our Christmas plans coming up. Uh, God's blessings to you all and have a wonderful evening in the Lord. <laughs>